Hey, it's Jameson with ATEC, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the Hayfleet P Surge 30, 30,000 volt surge generator, as well as the coupling decoupling network, and we're going to review the connections and run a test. Stay tuned. This is a 30 kilovolt combination wave generator with options for doing up to 30 kiloamps on the 8x20 current waveform. Also, there are modules for 10x350 and 10x1000 microseconds. Here we have the direct output in this little safety enclosure, but we're going to be using the CDN, the FP Surge 3010, which is a single phase CDN capable of up to 480 volts RMS or 110 volts DC, as well as handling 16 amps. In reviewing connections on the Hayfleet P Surge 30, we have the emergency stop switch and warning light, which must be used before enabling a test. We have our start or stop tests here, as well as our power on off button. We have LED indicators here for the safety or high voltage line on. Our synchronization cable, which goes to the CDN to allow pulsing on the power waveform. We also have our current and voltage monitoring ports that go to the oscilloscope, our safety circuit cable, and we also have a trigger out and UT failed port used for automated testing. Down below in the safety enclosure, we have our connections to the CDN for high voltage impulse, the neutral, and the ground. You also notice that the safety circuit opens when the door is open disabling any tests from being ran. On the FP Surge 3010, this is the power plug to power on the CDN. Here is the power connections for our device under tests. This breaker here turns on the power to the device. And now we can see that our safety circuit is disengaged so we can do a test. Here's our synchronization cable, our two safety ports or interlocks and here's how we turn on the EUT power. And here we have a safety feature in which we open the enclosure. We can see that the safety loop turns off in which the EUT power also turned off. So our device that we'll connect here in a minute will be connected to the line, ground, and neutral rails here. Now up above from where you make your connections to your EUT, we have our coupling modes. Right now we're currently wired on our impulse side to go to the line and our common side from the generator going to ground. So we're coupling from line to ground. To change that, now we're doing line and neutral impulse in reference to ground. Or if we want to couple from line to neutral, we would change our jumpers here like so line to neutral. On the main screen of the p Surge 30 generator, we can set our nominal voltage for this test. We will do a 10 kV surge with positive polarity. The pulse is repeating every 10 seconds. I'm just going to do two pulses for now. Down on the next menu, you can change the voltage and current range, which are used for the internal measurement circuit to give you equivalent waveforms on the VNC outputs to hook up to your oscilloscope. You can also set your EUT limits and use triggering and set your synchronization. Right now it's set to 180. I'm going to change that to 90 degrees on my 60 hertz waveform. And there's also a way to program transitions for your voltage levels or your change in synchronizations and alternating polarities from positive to negative. And other things such as beeping on fail or trigger, which we'll keep on. And here's general info on the unit. To see an example of the voltage transition, we're going to turn this on, hit enter, go down, and we can see here we can change our voltage step levels between 1 and my max set 10 kV. We're back on the main screen after I turned off the voltage ramp mode, and we're going to be doing a 1 10 kilovolt pulse. 
On the oscilloscope, we are monitoring voltage on channel 1 and the current on channel 2 from the transient generator. We can see that we just have an open circuit voltage waveform, and later we will have both voltage and current waveforms when connected to a DUT. Here we have our device center test connected to the CDN. It is a monitor, and we're going to run a 10 kV surge. On our scope, we were able to capture both the voltage and current waveforms. As you can tell, our device failed the test and no longer powers on. Please be sure to use the earth grounding rod to discharge the bus bars before removing your device under tests. Thank you for watching this video on the P-Search 30. If you have any questions or comments, please let us know in the comments below or reach out to us at atcorp.com.